guys, welcome back. I'm Sigoni, and this is the place where beginners learn to crochet like pros. In today's crochet tutorial, we're going to learn how to fasten off and weave in ends. In LCE week nine, we've been learning about finishing crochet projects. So this is talking about fastening off, weaving in ends, adding borders, blocking, and seaming pieces together. If you haven't heard about LCE, it's a new project that I've started this year, teaching you about the endless possibilities of crochet. Limitless Crochet Every Day will teach you how to become a better crocheter with new techniques, stitches, and free patterns to go along with them. So if you'd like to sign up for these weekly emails, I'll leave a link in the description box below. Although week nine is talking all about finishing off your crochet, today we're going to specifically talk about fastening off and weaving in your ends. And man, those ends, they can be my arch nemesis, am I right? My husband last week asked me, why do you always leave those tail ends after you finish a project? And my answer is, once I'm finished with the project itself, I'm done. And that's the reason why I have to weave in my ends as I go because I will never get them done afterward. So first we're going to talk about how to fasten off your work when you're finished with the project and then we'll talk about the different ways you can weave in your ends. The first way is with a tapestry needle, the second is with a crochet hook, and the third way is to crochet them in as you go. And there are subcategories to that one. So let's first get into fastening off our yarn. Once you reach the end of your row and you're ready to fasten off your work, what you're going to do is grab your scissors and cut your yarn leaving about a five inch tail. After you cut your tail, yarn over your hook and pull that loop through and then keep pulling that strand all the way through the loop. And then you'll pull tight on this strand to tighten up that knot there. And now you're left with two ends to weave in. This beginning tail came from when we created our slip knot and we left a long tail so that we could weave this end in later. And I want you to make sure that you are leaving a tail at the very beginning, at least five inches as well. You don't wanna cut your yarn too close so that you can't weave in those ends and then the knot could come out, whether in the wash or just daily wear. So be sure to keep a tail at least five inches. Now, after you've learned how to fasten off your work, we're going to move into weaving in our ends. The first way we're going to learn how to do this is using a tapestry needle. So you'll wanna make sure that your tapestry needle has a large eye and a blunt tip. This is not the same as a sewing needle. A sewing needle has a sharp tip, and if you're using that, it could split your yarn and ruin your fabric. So you wanna make sure not to do that. These tapestry needles come in different sizes. Most of them come in sets that have smaller eye holes and larger eye holes for thicker weight yarns. So make sure to get a variety pack like that. There are also tapestry needles that have bent tips and those are really great to have too. They make it a lot easier, especially when you're seaming garments or squares together. So I have three swatches here, one single crochet, one half double crochet, and one double crochet. And I'm going to show you how to weave in the ends for each of these stitches using a tapestry needle. I thought it would be helpful to see different ways to weave in a stitch depending on the construction of the stitch because weaving in your ends can look different depending on what stitch you're using. So first, let's go over the single crochet. When you're ready to weave in your ends, go ahead and thread your tapestry needle. And not all projects have a right or wrong side, but if your project does have a right side, make sure that you weave your ends in on the wrong side. So once you're ready to weave them in, for the single crochet, I like to go through the bottom of the stitch. So this is the back of the stitch. I like to call it a little butt because it kind of looks like a little butt. So that's what helps me to recognize the back of a single crochet stitch. So we're going to insert our tapestry needle through the butts of the stitches. Typically when it comes to weaving in my ends with a tapestry needle, I like to make sure that I go in three different directions. So for the single crochet, for example, the first thing I'll do is go through the base of the stitch and then I'll go down into the row below and then back to the right. And again, we're going through the back butts of the stitches. And yes, I realize I keep emphasizing the butts. I don't know why I'm doing that. And that's already three directions, but Sometimes I get over excessive and just keep going until my tail runs out. That's just if you want to be safe. And while you're weaving in your ends, you want to make sure not to pull too tight because it will make your stitches all scrunched together. So I like to pull them apart a little bit. So once you weave in your end, go ahead and cut it. 
as close to the fabric as possible, but be careful not to get one of your stitches. And there you have it. So you can't even tell that we just wove in our ends, right? Now you'll want to do the same thing with your tail from the beginning. All right, so that's how you weave in your ends when you're working with the single crochet, crochet. stitch. Let's talk about how to weave in your ends for the half double crochet. So again, we have our tail ends that have at least five inches. When it comes to weaving in ends for the half double crochet, I like to go through the secret passage, I like to call it. So I'll go through the base of the stitches and then I'll go down into another row and find those little ridges. And then I'll take my tapestry needle and whip stitch around those ridges. So we just go up and into that first ridge. And then we're going to come back around and insert our needle into the next set of ridges. And just keep whip stitching around. And I like to do this about three or four times. And look. The strand that you're weaving in matches that set of ridges. And this makes it so that you can't see where you're weaving in your ends. And it makes it extra secure because it's nice and tight in there. And speaking of tightness, the last stitch that I weave my end in, I like to make sure that it's a little bit tighter or a place where it's tighter so that it holds it in there. Ta-da! That's how you weave in your end into the secret passage of the half double crochet. And now we have the double crochet stitch. So I've already threaded my tapestry needle and we're just gonna get right into it. Because the double crochet is a taller stitch that has more gaps, it's harder to really hide those stitches. So my advice is to go through the post of the stitches and not so much the bottom of the stitches, which you can still do, but to hide them, how about I just show you? For the double crochet, I like to go through the post. So instead of just going into the base of the chain, I like to go through the middle of each post, still in three different directions. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is insert my needle into these strands here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that through. Now I'm going down this post. So I'm gonna go through these stitches and down to the bottom. And because I ended up over here, I'm going to skip over this strand here and insert my hook into that second leg and through a few stitches down this row. So through the post, down the row, and then through the post again, down the other side of the row. That's what I like to do with lacy work as well. Now there are also times where you might want to weave in your ends with a crochet hook. There are some tapestry needles where the eye is large enough to thread a super bulky yarn, but if you don't have one of these or you just prefer to use your hook, you can always do that. So let me show you how to weave in your ends with a crochet hook. So again, I'm going to flip my work to the wrong side, and I believe I used a nine millimeter hook to crochet this little swatch here. And so I'm going to use a 6.5 millimeter hook to weave in these ends. So all of the same rules apply whenever you're weaving in your ends. But what you're going to do different is you're just going to insert your hook into the stitches that you want to weave your ends in, and then wrap your yarn around the hook, just like you're yarning over, and pull that strand through. And again, just try not to make it too tight. Now I'm gonna go through a couple more stitches on this row. And I'm gonna wrap my yarn around and just pull this strand through. And then I'm gonna go down into my stitches here. So I'm going to insert my hook into this bottom stitch through the legs of this stitch and then for yarn over and pull that strand through again. All right, and then we'll go back in the other direction. So I'm going to insert my hook into three, three, four stitches yarn over, and then pull that strand through again. And because this is a bulkier weight yarn and I'm using a tight stitch for this swatch, you should be pretty good with that. I don't think that your ends would come undone. So just snip your yarn and there you have it. So that's how you weave in your ends with a crochet hook. Now lastly, we're going to learn how to weave in your ends as you go. And like I said earlier, there are three subcategories to this one. So the first way to weave in your ends as you go is to crochet over your end. So let's cover how to do that. 
So after you change your yarn color, you're going to have these loose ends here. So what you can do is crochet them in as you go. So to do that, make sure that your ends are in between that stitch and this strand of yarn. And then create a stitch as usual. And you can see that those yarn strands are trapped in the middle there. So do this for a couple stitches down the row. Just making sure that you're trapping those yarn ends in the middle there. And that's how you crochet over your ends. Now I wouldn't stop there. I think I would still weave these ends in a couple different directions. So it doesn't completely eliminate weaving in ends, but it does still make things a bit easier. Category. Now for the second subcategory for weaving in ends as you go is to crochet with your ends. Last week I shared this tutorial by Hooked by Robin and it is genius. So I'm going to share it briefly here, but if you want to see the full tutorial, I'll leave it linked in the description box. After you add on your new color, whether it's a new color or a new ball of yarn, you're going to be crocheting with your ends. This is my working yarn, the yarn that's attached to the ball, and this is the tail end. So what we're going to do is we have our chain two. Now we're going to yarn over and make sure that your tail end is here. So we're going to insert our hook into that next stitch, and then we're going to yarn over and pull through that stitch. Now, normally we would yarn over and pull through the first two stitches with our working yarn, but we're going to do it with both the working yarn and the tail end. So yarn over with both of those on there and pull through two. Now drop the tail and yarn over and pull through those. And now you'll do it again. So yarn over, making sure that your tail end is still right here in the middle. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Now again, grab both your working yarn and your tail end. Yarn over, pull through both of those loops and then drop your tail and yarn over, pull through two with your working yarn. And you'll just continue this same pattern as you go until you run out of tail. And as it gets smaller, it gets a little bit trickier to do, but that's why you wanna make sure that you have a tail that's at least five or six inches. So yarn over, pull through those first two loops with your working yarn and your tail end. Drop your tail and work through those two loops. So now you've successfully crocheted with your ends. So really you could just snip this yarn and you would be good to go. I'm not sure if the double crochet is the only stitch where you can do this because of the basic stitches, it's the only stitch that really has two steps. So you could try experimenting to see if you could do something similar with a different stitch. Now the last and final subcategory of weaving in your ends as you go is to take breaks. So this is more of a tip on weaving in ends rather than another hack of some sort. If you're working on a project that has a lot of color changes, what you can do is set a certain amount of rows, let's say 10 rows. So you work 10 rows and then you take a break to weave in your ends. Another thing you can do is maybe set a timer. So every 30 minutes that you crochet, take five minutes to weave in your ends. I think this would really help the overwhelm from seeing all these ends that you have to weave in. Because trust me, I can't take it. <laughs> Someone in my Facebook group the other day, you know who you are, posted a photo of her beautiful blanket, but there were so many ends, I'm talking probably every row that she had to weave in. And you know what I told her? Tie them up and make them look like tassels because there's no way I'm going back and weaving in those ends. For my Cheater's Gingham blanket, if you haven't heard of this blanket, it consists of creating seven different panels and then seaming them all together to form a blanket. And as you can see, there are tons of color changes, which means lots of ends to weave in. My suggestion for everyone who was participating in the cow was to create your first set of panels and then make sure you weave in those ends before you move on to the next set of panels. And the reason why I suggested that is because the first time I made that blanket, I messed up and did not weave in my ends until the end. And once all of my panels were sewn together, I almost lost it. So I'm telling you right now, take a break, weave in those ends for a few minutes, and you will be thankful later. All right, you guys, that's it for today's crochet tutorial on how to fasten off and weave in your ends. I hope you enjoyed this video today, and if you did, I would love for you to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below telling me your favorite way to weave in ends. I'll see you next time.